Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I have to say a very warm welcome to everybody here in the audience based on the weather conditions outside, so this morning minus 14. Horrible. Good news for you, of course, at first. Uh, we talk on a very small organ, which is very important for all men sitting here. But after the end of the talk, you will understand it's also important for all women in the audience. So you're focusing with a short introduction on the topic and move on to the basic concept on transrectal ultrasound uh, biopsy as well as MR ultrasound fusion biopsy, which is the new gold standard in my opinion. And last but not least, we're focusing on IRE, the focal treatment of prostate cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you are very familiar with this topic, the guppy. The guppy is also known as the million fish or rainbow fish, and this is one of the most popular freshwater aquarium species worldwide. And it's very interesting because you can subdivide 12 parts worldwide. And if you look on your right, you will see this is a male, and this is a type C fantail, which is important for the subdeviation based on ultrasound. And once again, this is a female uh, fish, the triangle tail type B, and with Doppler technology, you can see a beating heart on each direction. Of course, ultrasound is a real-time possibility, so we have to check this tiny object in a range of one centimeter in real time, um, and focusing on 4D technology, which is in the final end, of course, the future of ultrasound, we are able with this TAVI procedure to look at this small fish. And last but not least, today talking on image fusion, and you will see how beautiful it looks like. This is the real time, maybe in MR, and later on in ultrasound. What are the basic concepts in the field of transrectal ultrasound? Starting first with the image on your left, and I can tell you the story, this is really a pioneer, because this is Mr. Watanabe sitting on his own prostate chair and scanning his own prostate. That's why I say this is a pioneer, 50 years ago, and on your right, this is image fusion. Nowadays, we see T2-weighted imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, the uh, fusion mode, as well as the contrast inflow based on ultrasound. And last but not least, the final end of the story is to picking up the aggressive portion in a tumor based on the image fusion concept. If you deal with this topic, we have to be aware of the technical requirements for this uh, purpose. And on your left, this is a biplane probe, mostly used by urologists. Uh, we have an end fire probe, a new probe, new transducer technology for contrast application, as well as shear wave elastography. And on your right, this is necessary for therapeutic options like IRE. What are the recommendations? So uh, first of all, we have to understand that we have to do a 10 or 12 core sampling in larger volumes. And our institution starting first with oral antibiotics following a local anesthesia, like an ultrasound guided periprostatic block. And then on your right, it's an easy procedure, uh, not very time consuming, but it's a blind box in my opinion. This is how it looks like, a typical clinical case, 10 core sampling and no cancer was detected. I know him very well because this patient had an aggressive cancer. Some authors deal with the topic of transperineal ultrasound biopsy. Yeah, there is a possibility, but believe me, 24 cores, it's painful, or general anesthesia, it's very difficult, of course, and very expensive. So the next step is to talk on MR ultrasound fusion as an alternative method for this purpose. This is the situation in our institution on your left. First of all, focusing on a target biopsy procedure, two samples in combination with a random biopsy, 10 core sampling. And on your right, that's the development on in-bore biopsy based on MR in correlation to fusion biopsy. And you will see the increasing number, which is now on a very high level. This is a typical case, scanning the patients based on MR. And we can say, yes, 78 years old male, uh, the PSA level is high, and he had four negative biopsies in the history, including one fusion biopsy. From the Pirates' point of view, this is a Pirates 5 scoring, and uh, now I show you the detail of the fusion biopsy. Uh, revealed an aggressive uh, cancer, a small cancer focus here, 4 plus 4, and it's easy to proceed. Next step is to compare every data with the literature. And first of all, I can say, yes, it works, because our detection rate is as high as the MR inbore biopsy. Uh, we can say if we deal with this topic in the first round, we can pick up 74% of cases with prostate cancer. So that's a great step into the future, in my opinion, 
dealing with this purpose. So from the literature, we can say targeted biopsy alone detect as many Gleason score 7 or greater tumors while simultaneously mitigating the detection of lower grade disease. This is an example of written report in our department. You see there's a small, fo small focus on the left side in the midland. And this is how it looks like on the ultrasound platform, loading all the MR data inside and then starting the fusion procedure, first of all, with the Doppler technology, SMI Doppler. Next step is to use in the multi-parametric setup the contrast inflow, see a tiny lesion, an early inflow, a strong enhancement exactly of the area of interest, and then, of course, we have to do the fusion biopsy. On your left, you will see the MR scan originally, and on your right, this is the puncture procedure. Gleason 4 plus 4 in two of 12 samples all of these samples are included in the target biopsy. Contrast enhanced ultrasound, on your right, a lot of new possibilities, 3D, Doppler evaluation, arrival time, color encoding, fusion mode, and on your left, this is time intensity curve measurement, also done on the raw data. And if you look at the purple curve, this is the aggressive cancer, and the blue curve, this is the non-aggressive cancer, 3 plus 3, and the yellow curve, this is the opposite side, no cancer was detected, so we are able to pick up also tumor aggressiveness in terms of contrast and hence ultrasound. This is a publication uh, running out of our department where we have a direct comparison between MR and ultrasound, and we can say, yes, we are able to pick up tumor aggressiveness with both modalities, and of course, this is important if you deal with the fusion purpose. These are some results. Uh, you, you see the best results for the subdeviation between benign and malignant findings was rise time and time to peak. So that means the early inflow parameters. And the meaning is it's good for us because it takes only 30 seconds to have the diagnosis. And if we have a subgroup analysis of aggressiveness, we can say peak enhancement, wash in and wash out is also very important. Ultrasound elastography, yeah, there is also a value if you deal with this purpose to do additional targeting biopsies on this topic, to see small foci, to see multifocal um, disease, so it's much easier to pick up also these uh, focal spots based on ultrasound if you do an elastography before. This is also a good conf confirmation from the literature. We can say if we deal with this purpose, we have a higher detection rate if we use these additional biopsies, especially if we use elastography and contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Interesting case, because if you look at this, this was the starting point of this patient, a PET scan. Yeah? You will see, first of all, this was a private patient, of course. He's starting with a PET scan, and we see this small lesion here. Good correlation with the dynamic contrast enhanced MR, the T2 weighted imaging, and also with the Doppler setup. This is the so called SMI Doppler, a very fancy tool to pick up the tiniest vessels in the prostate. And last but not least, we have to correspond these findings with the early inflow based on contrast application. And if you look very carefully, you will see the whole left side is enhancing much earlier than the right side. It's not only this small focus, you will see it here also in the PET skin. This area was 3 plus 3, and this area was 4 plus 3. So important for us to pick up the exact position of the tumor. And on your right, once again, last but not least, we have the focusing on fusion biopsy, and you see we are able to pick up these 5 millimeter lesion very clearly based on ultrasound. Next step, now we have to talk also on treatment, on focal treatment. If you be aware on the case before, now we are able to pick up a tiny lesion. We be really sure there is no additional lesion. And of course, we can focusing now more and more on focal therapy. In our institution, starting this uh, concept with the IRE, a reversible electroporation, and the basic concept behind is that we uh, start an application of a short electric impulse uh, with 3,000 volts in a millisecond. And then we use an apoptosis of the tumor cell after a micropouring in this tumor cell. And hopefully we will have an activation of phagocytes. And if you look at the necrosis after 14 days, there is no necrosis visible. And that's why we can say, yes, IRE has a certain selectivity for soft tissue, such as tumor cells, especially for the membrane, while it is less lethal for nerves, fibrotic tissue, 
and vessels, which is absolutely important, in my opinion, also for the function of the organ. This is an overview on our institution, how it works. You see the ultrasound probe is mounted on the rack. This is a stepper procedure where we use this grid for the insertion of the needles. This is how it looks like nowadays because we have a brand new building, new operation theater, and my ultrasound center is close by, so we are in a lucky situation to go together immediately to the operation center. Of course, this is a transperineal approach. We use in general anesthesia. This is how it looks like, and there is a uh, short conclusion from the literature. The role of imaging in conjunction with IRE is of crucial importance to guide clinicians throughout the treatment protocol. And you see here, contrast-enhanced ultrasound for monitoring as well as MR is involved in the feedback of uh, this session. This is how it looks like. It's the same uh, topic, the same theory behind the MR fusion protocol. You will see we starting first with the anatomical overview on T2-weighted imaging, move on to diffusion-weighted imaging, and then real-time B-mode scanning, like in this a small fishing game before. Then the application of five or four needles in the surrounding portion of the tumor, and this is how it looks like directly in the patient procedure. Dealing with the first case, uh, once again on your uh, left, you will see there was a huge apical lesion, not easy to treat. And on your right, you will see how it looks like. First of all, scanning T2 and real-time ultrasound, B-mode. Next step is to use diffusion-weighted imaging. We can see much clearer at the tumor border, which is of importance uh, to be sure that we have the right access to the tumor. And next step is to use this grid overlay between MR and ultrasound to fix these very thin needles for the therapeutic setup. The first needle is coming in. You will see the artifact beautiful here and here, the first two needles in the surrounding portion of the tumor. Next step, needle three and four, and I think that's, that's good to picking up these uh, lesion based on this uh, strategy and concept. Next step is to go into the sagittal scan plane to have an orientation how deep we have to go inside the, the prostate. And then finally, we have to control in two scan planes, once again, diffusion-weighted imaging in an uh, apical view and as well as in the sagittal view. Next step, using this Doppler concept with and without contrast to see there is no perfusion at the final end after 10 minutes of uh, the procedure. So we can say yes, uh, hopefully we have involved the whole tumor volume. Last but not least, we can say there's also a good value on um, elastography because we have a softening of the tumor tissue after the final end of the therapy. This is a view in our operation center, and this is a short clip where we can see the whole procedure um, as a short movie. Starting with the insertion of the, of the probe, which is mounted on the rack, like in that example. You will see then the view here on the ultrasound platform. The catheter is in the bladder. We scan then the whole prostate. We check out that we are correctly in the middle uh, of the prostate. You see in the middle of the image the catheter, and then the direct comparison with all these findings, the interaction and discussion with the urologist. And here you can see the highly vascularized lesion in the apical situation, it's a different case. And once again, first step is to have a clear positioning of the right area of interest using MR ultrasound fusion. Now we start the fusion process. And the first step is to optimize the B-mode scan. You will see this tiny lesion as a hypoechoic spot. Next step is to load your MR into your ultrasound workstation. Then use your ultrasound workstation uh, to prepare the best image quality in MR. You see it here. So the meaning is we can use the ultrasound platform as a kind of PAX in this situation. We can load different sequences. And then we optimize our fusion approach you see simple by click-click, that means it's a very fast fusion procedure to pick up this tiny tumor area and to be sure that we are in the right position. Once again, double check with perfusion. And then you see different scan planes are available, coronal view, sagittal view, um, and then the first needle uh, is coming. Starting always with the blue needle, this is the so-called activator needle. That's important for the first positioning. 
You see the grid is uh, really helpful because it's a stabilizing factor here for the SIN needle. And then, of course, monitoring on your left MR, on your right real-time ultrasound. So the meaning is the first needle is, is coming. And now it's easy for me because now I can tell the colleague, now please B1 or C2, whatever, uh, to pick up this tumor area very carefully. So this is an optimized approach, very safe procedure. Um, with no severe side effects, in my opinion. You will see here the second needle is coming now. And then finally, we can visualize once again the needle tip exactly in the area of interest. In our planning, you will see it here also on the screen. Perfect. There's the second needle available. Good positioning in the surrounding portion to the tumor. There must be a safety margin in a range of five millimeters, but it's easy if you have a nice b mode quality to pick up this tiny needle and to be sure that you are in the right position. You see here the third needle is coming, D and between one and two, and then finally the double check between both of us that we are in the right position. The next step is contrast enhanced ultrasound for the monitoring of this procedure. And that's very funny because we can do this in the operation theater itself. So the meaning is uh, we can um, readjust the needles once again after the procedure. We can do it one time. And so it's very important for me. And you will see here the overlay between MR on your left and ultrasound with contrast application on your right to see this big perfusion defect in the ablation area or ablation zone. And once again, switch back to the B mode to see the planning before and to correlate these findings with and without perfusion. You can reconstruct this perfusion defect also in 3D, uh, which is, in my opinion, also a future purpose. There are some results in the literature uh, so far that we can say there are no severe side effects. And uh, this is interesting because uh, I can um, support this conclusion. It's the same in our department. Our data support the safety and feasibility of focal IRV as a primary treatment for localized prostate cancer with effective short-term oncological control in carefully selected men. What does it mean, carefully? Carefully means you need, first of all, a, a clear pirate scoring before. This must be a focal lesion. This lesion must be visible in MR. And that's really important. And as a future goal, I think there's a good value using contrast application, especially if we have a combination of targeting microbubbles to be sure that we have no additional foci in the prostate because with this procedure, you can ablate the whole organ, half of the organ, or a very small ablation zone. That's very important from this point of view. So coming to the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy detects more clinically significant prostate cancers than conventional ultrasound biopsy. Multiparametric ultrasound confirms tumor aggressiveness by prediction of the highest pirate score. It works good in our clinical setup. Contrast enhanced ultrasound has the highest sensitivity with 85% in this concept. IRE, there is a controlled ablation of the target volume, which is possible without any kind of heatsink effect. The image fusion offers the possibility at the final end of real-time ultrasound with contrast enhanced ultrasound for the detection, characterization, and treatment monitoring of prostate cancer. Finally, I have to say thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you.